right, how many of you have been using HTTP today? Okay, quite a few. How many of you have been using HTTPS today? Okay, many more. So amongst those who have been using HTTP, do you want, did you want to use it or did you have to use HTTP? Okay, so not too many people who have to use HTTP is in despite wanting to use encryption. That's interesting. Well, Jonah over here seems to feel that this problem is more urgent than it looks like in this crowd. So he's going to talk to us about moving towards a fully encrypted web. So please, all welcome him with a, with a fine applause, Jonah. Is the mic on? Yeah. So welcome to my talk about the uh, web encryption, uh, where we are today, uh, how we got here, and wha what is about to uh, happen in the web PKI. So who am I? Uh, my name is Juno. Uh, I have been working in backend development and uh, system ad administration for uh, 15 years. For the last two years, I have been also contributing to SearchBot projects and uh, we'll be wor working full-time on CertBots starting next month. So, <coughs> what's up? Why am I standing here today? Um, web encryption, pretty much everybody knows something about it, at least. So, let's travel a few years back. Uh, we, everybody, uh, not only the technical people um, expect a certain level of privacy in all the digital communications today. Um, it's like a be it instant messaging, email, phone calls, whatever. Of course, that, that's not true always, but that's what we expect. We expect the communication to be private at a certain level at least. So, <coughs> for most services today, uh, we're in pretty good good situation. Um, instant messaging is pretty much, well, at least most of it uh, is encrypted, at least on some level. Um, phone calls uh, and uh, email, somewhat. We can actually uh, thank Google and blame Google at the same time uh, about the email stuff because uh, they have taken so large chunk of uh, email traffic that uh, they're forcing people to uh, use uh, start TLS and uh, other like uh, authenticity uh, uh, texts like uh, DKIM and uh, so on. And uh, Apple, uh, they are forcing uh, applications that they distribute through the App Store to use HTTPS only for the API communications. But uh, our beloved web, that's something that we have somewhat settled uh, upon, like uh, HTTP, this is just this like a uh, web stuff. It's plain old HTTP. It's all fine, uh, and we don't think more about it. Well, sometimes back at least. It's like uh, we're not a bank, uh, so Telnet is fine for uh, remote administration, right? Said no system administrator in the last 20 years. But the web hasn't received the same like uh, level of, ha hasn't reached that level for some reason yet. So SSL TS, uh, TLS, it's nothing new. It's actually 22 years old tech uh, that was introduced by uh, Netscape back in 1995. Has gone through many iterations. Uh, SSL 1.0, that never got public because of the security flaws. Um, there was uh, 
SSL 2.0 and 3.0, and uh, after that, uh, TLS 1.0 uh, in 99. That was based on uh, SSL 3, and could actually downgrade the connections to SSL 3. Then we have had uh, TLS 1.1 1 .1 in uh, 2006, uh, and TLS 1.2 in uh, 2008, and we are uh, in uh, pro process of moving towards uh, TLS 1.3, which is currently at, at the draft stage at uh, IETF. So we have had this tech for uh, 20 years plus. So why am I standing here today talking about web encryption and the adoption of web encryption today? Well, it has been pricey, painful, and uh, the whole process has been like a hard, and people tend to skip the hard, not completely uh, required stuff, because, yeah, not completely required. So people tend to skip it when not abso uh, absolutely necessary. Uh, so the configuration has been tedious. Uh, the acquiring the certificates, they require you to hop through many loops to actually acquire a signed uh, a certificate from CA. But today, uh, we are in a bit different world. Uh, this is the state we are currently. Uh, statistics collected from uh, Firefox telemetry show that actually, I think last week uh, we peaked 60% of the requests made by Firefox, uh, peaked 60%. Uh, and uh, this doesn't look so impressive, the <laughs> graph it itself, but note the scale, if you can see it. It's like a uh, scale is two years, and uh, in that time, the amount of uh, encrypted uh, requests over the web has grown 50%, like a, that's huge. Because after all, <laughs> it's a 20 year old, uh, old tech. So, what has happened? Uh, why? Are we moving more rapidly today? So, deploying HTTPS has got a lot more accessible. You don't necessarily need the like a uh, technical knowledge of all all, all of the stuff. We have uh, client tools that actually acquire the certificate, uh, get it uh, get it signed, and uh, do the uh, configuration on your server software for you with uh, decent defaults at least. Um, there has also been pressure from browser vendors. Uh, Google, uh, Mozilla, I'm not sure if Apple does it, but uh, at least uh, those uh, show the user's warnings currently on a sites that are plain HTTP and uh, have like uh, login forms or payment forms of a kind. Um, browsers are also limiting the me media APIs to secure origins. Media I APIs mean like uh, microphone access, webcam access. Uh, so that drives the developers to actually uh, bring the HTTPS in from the get-go. So let's encrypt removing financial constraints, ACME protocol behind it, uh, helping with auto automation, uh, the clients doing the configuration, at least some, and uh, browser vendors uh, forcing people to move towards HTTPS by uh, end-user questions and requ requests. When end-user sees uh, uh, on a login page, see it's not secure. They're prone to ask, why is, why is this? So, <coughs> uh, 
about the actors here. Uh, Let's Encrypt. Uh, you are most likely familiar with Let's Encrypt. So uh, it's a project by Internet Security Re Research Group. Um, gives you short-lived certificates for 90 days because of the um, problems with uh, revocation and so on. This is a, a good thing, short-lived certificates. Um, only domain validated certificates. There are no um, extended validation certificates or uh, organization vali validation. And uh, the whole purpose is just to get the web encrypted. Nothing, nothing more. So there are some limits in place uh, in, in a way that uh, you can't uh, request 2,000 certificates from one machine at the, like a, in a short time frame. But the uh, limits are high enough that nobody actually should hit them. And if you have a legit reason, a reason you, you, you need like a more bandwidth, you know, in a sense, there are like a system for exceptions for a large uh, ISPs and so on. So, the importance of transparency and automation. Um, this acts as a prelude to uh, talking about the ACME, the pro protocol behind this. Uh, so, why do the automation and openness actually matter? What's wrong with uh, old ways of doing stuff. Uh, the major CAs that have been around for a, for a long time, um, they have their own process. Uh, they are audited like uh, regularly, I think once a year, once, twice, uh, twice a year, uh, once per two years or so, um, by uh, like uh, third parties. So what's wrong with that? Uh, CA browser forum requires the audits. So, what could go wrong? Part one, <coughs> 404. Uh, GoDaddy was uh, handling the domain validation for uh, certificates uh, by um, software bug that was in place for half a year. Uh, they picked the validation string from any part of the uh, response body, which meant that uh, if the serv uh, web server was configured in a way that uh, showed uh, the URI in, in the 404 page, pretty much anyone could get a certificate signed for that domain. That's pretty bad. They had uh, almost 9,000 9, certificates revoked as a precautionary me measure uh, because those were potentially uh, misissued. And uh, this is an uh, example of a validation that would be actually valid if my valid token there was the actual validation token. And uh, whoever requested for a this domain, uh, a certificate for this domain would have the certificate signed and issued. So this was uh, GoDaddy, so of course it's fixed and uh, life goes on. So what could go wrong? Part two, OCR. <coughs> EU, BE, and AT domains, uh, they didn't, uh, don't provide uh, the admin email address in the WHOIS uh, information. Instead, uh, they have this image uh, on the web who is search. And uh, some CAs use email as a validation channel for a domain. So they pretty much they pick uh, the admin email from, from uh, uh, who is response and uh, send a validation email to, uh, to that address. And uh, yeah. After a few steps, the certificates get signed because the, uh, re whoever requested it is able to prove that they own the dom domain. But yeah, these domains don't provide the uh, admin e email in who is response. So Komodo was doing automation. 
they used OCR to dig the actual textual uh, address from the image. What could go wrong, right? Um, so there is uh, this large ISP in Austria called A1 Telecom. And uh, researchers uh, Florian Heinz and Mar Martin Kluge were able to actually, rec uh, well, they registered the domain AL Telecom and uh, requested a certificate for A1 Telecom.at. And uh, the Komodo OCR picked, uh, a, uh, interpreted the uh, A1 Telecom domain in the Whois image uh, as an AL Telecom, and they got the certificate signed. And it's a pretty big thing because this is large ISP, right? So yeah. Um, so, what could go wrong? Part three. Symantec had uh, this registration authority program, which meant that the third-party companies could like uh, use their infrastructure to to uh, issue certificates for uh, the customers, and uh, they were issued, issued <coughs> using the Symantec infrastructure. So. That's not an actual problem, but uh, the responsibility, it's still Symantec, and uh, they were, weren't policing their uh, registra uh, registration authority program members uh, that well. So um, they have to answer for their mistakes in a way. So there was this uh, Korean uh, uh, company that signed like a lot of uh, uh, certificates, like a test certificate for Google.com and uh, things like that. So some small stuff, and they like uh, didn't abide the rules of uh, uh, of a CAB uh, in a sense of uh, the ownership information in the certificate and so on. So potentially th uh, 30,000 cert certificates were affected. But there is this slight problem, because uh, Symantec, it's too big to fail, or at least was. Um, 2015, they had 30% of the, uh, of the, of the uh, certificates in, wa in, in the wild were issued by Symantec. So you can't, like, uh, you, you break way too many things if you distrust the whole uh, CA. So instead, uh, Google took a step that uh, they will like uh, lower the uh, allowed expiration uh, time for uh, Symantec certificates every Chrome release. So it's going to go down to, to nine months, I think. That will be the maximum. And I think they also revoked the, well, this allowed the Symantec to, to use the EV certificates completely. So that's not, not all with Symantec. Just like a few weeks, weeks ago, uh, Hanno Beck registered two test domains and uh, got certificates from them, uh, for them from Symantec. He actually also uh, got certificates from Komodo. Uh, Komodo didn't fall for this. So, uh, after that, he created uh, like a false, uh, fake uh, private keys and posted them to Pastebin and uh, reported to the CA that his private keys for these domains uh, or these certificates have been compromised and posted online, so I would need to revoke the, uh, revoke the certificates, please. Well, of course, those private keys weren't like uh, the real ones, and uh, he wanted to see if the CAs would actually validate the authenticity of the cryptographic authenticity of the uh, private keys before actually revoking them. So Symantec revoked the certificates, and uh, they tried to hide the reason that they were, or uh, did not answer directly why the certificate was revoked when he 
uh, contact them, them uh, like a, in a role of the original like a uh, certificate owner and private key owner, asking why it got re revoked because uh, it's yeah the private key is not in the wild and uh, they didn't actually have the uh, right reasons of course to to revoke it so. Uh, be sure to check Hanno's uh, talk. Uh, he, I, I think he's talking tonight uh, about uh, fuzzing uh, here at SHA as well. So, yeah. Uh, did you know, notice there was uh, these examples had uh, like uh, three CAs, Komodo, Symantec, and uh, GoDaddy. These are actually the biggest commercial CAs out there. And all of these all of this has happened during the last two years. And uh, I think that's uh, like a good reasoning why we need uh, um, openness and uh, automation. These are all human errors, in a way, or er errors in the process. And these, of course, all, all of these companies have been audited by uh, 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 like the third parties. So it should be okay, right? <clears throat> so, there's one more. Uh, what could go wrong, part four? Startcom and WooSign. So, uh, Startcom was uh, a pretty nice CA. They handed out uh, pre certificates for, have, have been doing that, that for a long time. Um, but they actually got acquired by uh, WooSign. Uh, and uh, they didn't disclose, they tried to hide the fact that they, they were actually bought by a Wuhan, a Chinese CA. And uh, that's a whole different story, but uh, they had a few technical flaws as well. So, they allowed the use of any port for a domain validation, which in reality means that uh, in a shared hosting environment, any, user, any unprivileged user who is still able to open the sockets uh, on a unprivileged ports over 1024, uh, were actually able to validate uh, any domain that pointed to the IP address, address of the um, shared hosting server in, 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 the, in question. So, yeah. Um, also, they failed the validation of SNI uh, certificates. So, if your certificate request had like a multiple uh, domains in it, uh, they would validate only the first one. And this actually resulted in uh, uh, in a Stephen Schroger uh, getting a certificate for uh, GitHub.com <laughs> because he was using the the first domain was. Uh, the old style of uh, GitHub pages, uh, like a domain, uh, his username.github.com. And that was the only one that was validated, even though the certificate uh, request had uh, github.com, do main domain, as well. He also got a certificate for uh, <coughs> his universities, uh, like a main domain, the same way. So, yeah. Um, you were you were you were able to actually add after the validation you were able to add uh, new domains to the certificate request after the validation as well, pretty bad, and uh, they issued backdated SHA one certificates after uh, the period when no CAs were allowed uh, to issue SH one certificates for obvious reasons. Uh, SH one is like a, yeah broken. So, yeah, uh, but the automation, that would fix all of these problems if done correctly. Uh, ACME protocol is uh, answer to that problem. So, ACME stands for uh, Automated Certificate Management Environment. Uh, it's currently in draft phase at uh, IETF in seventh iteration uh, will be RFC at some time. Talks JSON, uh, signed JSON um, over HTTPS with the CA. 
uh, has a lot of features uh, that would be needed by uh, be, be, uh, you could be uh, like a commercial CA and use Acme automation. It has everything uh, the uh, commercial CA would need as well. Um, so Acme has uh, different kinds, uh, different ways to validate your ownership of the domain, domain validation. You can like. Uh, uh, the HTTP validation means that you will place a resource in your web route uh, for the CA to request it. And uh, if they get the right uh, expected token, they have confirmed your ownership of the domain. Uh, TLS SNI, which means you will create a self-signed certificate uh, with the uh, uh, validation token. The CA will do the same thing, resolve the DNS. Uh, connect to the IP address of your uh, domain. It's prior, pr uh, yeah, let's encrypt this prioritizing IPv6, by the way. So, a, 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 a record first, and uh, if not found, a record, and so on. Um, currently, let's encrypt is still doing like uh, uh, this from one endpoint. So, uh, but the, it's moving toward like uh, using multiple. Uh, request endpoints to avoid problems with DNS poisoning and so on. So TLS SNI, um, and uh, then there's uh, DNS validation, which basically is just like uh, adding a uh, TXT record with a val validation token uh, to your uh, zones, DNS zones uh, record with uh, like a magic subdomain underscore acme uh, dash challenge dot your actual token dot TLD, uh, your actual uh, domain dot TLD. And there is uh, uh, out of band uh, challenge as well, which is not used by uh, Let's Encrypt that, and it's more like a manual process. <coughs> so there are many client implementations uh, using ACME to uh, request and uh, get certificates from. Uh, Let's Encrypt, which is the only CA currently uh, using ACME. Uh, and there are a lot, a lot of clients that are really good. Then there is few awesome um, complete integrations, which means eventually we, of course, want to have the HTTPD handling the whole uh, HTTPS thing from the get-go you will just tell what domains you want to serve uh, to the users, and the HTTPD would, would hand, handle the, that. Uh, there's Caddy, which does this already. It's really good HTTPD written in Go by uh, Matt Holt, and of course, because open source project, a lot of uh, contributors uh, as well. And uh, it does HTTPS as default. Um, and the, yeah, the configuration is super simple as well. Then there is uh, this new project, which is not uh, still, still still not production ready, but it's like a moving fast uh, Apache mod MD uh, that will do the same thing thing somewhat. You will have to add like a new configuration parameter, but that's all. And uh, that's where we actually want to be at some point. Uh, every HTTPD handling this for the user. So there's really no, uh, no reason for uh, uh, deep tech uh, technological knowledge of uh, w inner wor workings of TLS and uh, uh, requesting cert certificates. That's something uh, that should, be, should, should just work users or administrators, uh, administrators sh should not like need to worry about this in today. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk about a bit about CertBot, uh, because that's the uh, one, I'm, uh, uh, one client that I'm most familiar with. Uh, it's an ACME client by uh, EFF. And uh, yeah, that's the same thing as the other uh, clients, of course. Uh, 
crea creates the certificates and uh, and gets it signed by 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 the by the Let's Encrypt CA. Um, but I think that's the only like a uh, client with more advanced HTTPS configuration management as well. So uh, it will additionally, if you want, uh, it will configure your server uh, for you. Currently, it's working for Apache uh, and uh, Nginx, but uh, there are developments ongoing that it won't only configure your HTTPDs, but uh, other uh, server software as well, like uh, email and uh, so on. <coughs> and uh, yeah, uh, it gives the users like a sane configuration defaults. Not, of course, perfect, but uh, it's, it's always a struggle between like uh, uh, backward compatibility and uh, security in this like uh, domain. So yeah, um, of course, nothing goes without these issues. Uh, we are moving rapidly uh, towards the fully encrypted web, but there are, of course, still issues. Uh, I think the main one is uh, lack of HSTS header. This pretty much means that uh, the fir uh, upon the first request, if your domain is not on the HSTS preload list uh, of the uh, of the user agents. Uh, it will on, upon the first request, it will tell the browser uh, to only communicate with me uh, using H uh, HTTPS uh, for a time period. That's also in the header. Uh, if it's not there. Uh, downgrade, uh, downgrade ad attacks are possible. Uh, in a sense, uh, you might know uh, SSL, SSL strip, which actually gives the man-in-the-middle attacker uh, possibility to uh, handle only hand, hand only uh, unencrypted uh, requests to the actual client, and it, it uses, if needed, it uses uh, HTTPS. By, with communi communicating with the actual server, so it doesn't break compatibility. So a bit about a, uh, uh, HSTS. Uh, it's cached value in a browser. Uh, so there are many like uh, situations that it could actually broke your uh, break your uh, existing site if you're migrating from HTTP to HTTPS. And this is also one of the reasons why it has not been like uh, uh, widely uh, deployed yet. And uh, you can't like uh, just tell people, uh, just add the HSTS header to your, uh, to your uh, web server configuration, because that could potentially break your site for uh, for whatever time you set the uh, max age to be. So yeah, um, this is the uh, like a demonstration of uh, effectiveness of uh, bad HSTS deployments. You know, it's effective, but things can go horribly wrong. You know, <laughs> so. <coughs> That's why we uh, like uh, can't re rec recommend it for everybody. <laughs> Good intentions, yeah. Okay, uh, another issue today uh, is uh, broken replication. It's it's completely broken. Uh, uh, revocations, uh, revocation lists are not used because browsers uh, browser vendors are like a uh, value UX over uh, security, uh, like a, they cut the amount of requests this way when the user agent doesn't have to check every uh, domain. They use uh, CRL sets, uh, Google uses CRL sets uh, set and uh, Firefox, uh, can't remember actu actually the name, 
for uh, but for, uh, Mo Mozilla has a similar uh, thing in place. It's basically a high pri a list of uh, domain high priority dom domains that have had their certificate revoked. So uh, if you're not like a big player and uh, your certificate or your private keys get compromised and you revoke your certificate, the browsers will most likely be happy to serve the uh, serve the uh, revoked certificate and uh, not like a, make it work just like a, yeah. So we have a check in place. Uh, there's a certificate extension called uh, OCSP must stable. Uh, that would make the uh, the HTTPD itself uh, to get the signed timestamps by the uh, OCSP server. So when they um, when they send the certificate for the client, uh, the client can verify that it, it has uh, a recent enough timestamp. So that pretty much handles the, or at least shortens the uh, impact of broken revocation. But the server impl impl implementations are <coughs> somewhat bad uh, because the HTTPDs usually uh, work as like an event-based. When you when you make when when the client makes the uh, connection, uh, that's oh, that's the only point when the, when the uh, server checks uh, the must stable timestamp, and that's if if it, if it's recent enough, and if if it's not, uh, it would then proceed and uh, try to get it signed again. So this results in the end user to have like a, a longer uh, round trip times. They the uh, response could take a long time if there's some. Uh, issues in the connection between the uh, HTTPD server and the OCSP uh, server that would result in a brick site, uh, site, so completely unusable for the clients until the server gets the connection and uh, gets a new signed timestamp. So yeah, uh, the future, where are we heading? I al already talked uh, about CLS 1.3. That's going to be good. But there's more. Um, the browser vendors are going to pressure the, end, uh, the uh, like administrators uh, through the end users, users even more. Uh, this image shows the current state and uh, the state after Chrome 62 gets released, how it's going to look. So uh, currently, they, were o they are only using the, uh, showing the not secure uh, notification if your site has a login form or a credit card form, payment form of, of a kind. kind. <coughs> but uh, they will be, after Chrome 62, they will be showing the not secure on every site that has form, any kind of uh, form. So that's good. Uh, and uh, not secure notification for every site that's HTTP uh, if you're running in incognito mode. You can actually turn the incognito mode like behavior on today by going to Chrome uh, slash slash uh, flags and there's an option called uh, mark non-secure origins as non-secure. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, <coughs> there's still more. Uh, there are some new requirements by CAB, uh, CA slash browser uh, forum. Uh, the CAs are forced to respect the CAA header starting next month. Uh, CAA head, uh, header, uh, CAA uh, record from the DNS. Uh, CAA record will allow the uh, DNS administrator to actually, or the domain owner to actually restrict the CAs that are allowed to issue certificate for this domain. So you could like uh, restrict the issuers to whatever CA you like. Then there will be uh, certificate transparency requirements for 
all certificates that get signed after April uh, 2018. Uh, this is good. Uh, certificate transparency is awesome. Uh, so it will actually be in user agents as well as, as an option. User agent can check the certificate if, if it has the signed certificate timestamp and uh, uh, require that one. You can try this soon-ish. Chrome is going to, uh, Google is going to ship uh, Chrome version. Don't don't know actually which ver version, uh, but with with which version, but uh, <coughs> it will give the administrators ability to add a new uh, HTTP header called uh, expect CT, and uh, that will tell the user agent to actually check the uh, SCT header in the uh, SCT record in the in the uh, certificate. There are going to be wildcard certificates issued by uh, Let's Encrypt starting January 2018. So in half a year, we are able to get uh, wildcard certificates from Let's Encrypt. Uh, domain validated certificates are good and better for obvious reasons, but there are still, of course, there are still uh, use cases where you need the wildcard certificates. Uh, wildcard certificates will be able to, uh, you, you will be able to request wildcard certificates only by using the D DNS challenge. And uh, that's because if you use HTTP challenge for wildcard certificate, that, that would mean that uh, you could like uh, <coughs> just by uh, uh, validating some random uh, domain, you could like uh, claim ownership over every uh, like a subdomain that could be like uh, managed by some other entities so only dns challenge for that um dns challenge is pretty good uh but combined with uh, automation it has some like a downsides as well um if you want to automate uh, DNS challenges, that would mean you will, first you would need to use a DNS uh, server that has an API. Um, and second, you would have to store the API keys on your box. So if any of your boxes that need uh, or use DNS challenges uh, gets compromised, that means that your whole DNS zone gets compromised, in a sense. And uh, that would possibly, could possibly mean like using your whole digital identity as well as uh, the whoever uh, has your DNS zone could like uh, pick up your email. Every email sent to that, that domain by changing the MX records and so on. So it's pretty bad, something to avoid. <laughs> but luckily, Acme and Let's Encrypt, uh, well, not, uh, Acme doesn't uh, uh, like a mandate that, but uh, <coughs> Let's Encrypt follows C names. So this means that you could actually use like a <coughs> some throwaway domain for the DNS validation by pointing the C names to that throwaway domain. Of course, you most likely won't be registering two domains uh, for every actual domain you want to use. So it will, this way, if you use one like a central throwaway uh, domain for validation, uh, that could result in like a many. Uh, or could result in a compromise of uh, certificates, or, or the attacker could like uh, request certificates for every domain that points to the, that throwaway domain. <coughs> so, uh, some ten months ago, uh, I created a small uh, piece of software that's called Acme DNS. Uh, it's a simplified DNS server, um, acts as uh, subdelegates uh, DNS. And uh, 
it restricts the updates done via its API to only TXT records. And uh, the way you would use it would be um, first creating a creating a, a account, which is done by a HTTPS uh, like a post request. It generates a random subdomain. It generates a random username, random password. There are no like a password uh, reset options or anything like that. So um, if you lose your uh, credentials for reason or another, just get a new one. But yeah, uh, so you get your unique uh, subdomain that you will point your actual domains like a magic Acme Challenge subdomain to. And uh, yeah, it has, has a few, few like, uh, features that uh, elevate the uh, level of security a bit. Uh, you can like, uh, define IP uh, ranges that are able to, to do the uh, update requests for this subdomain and so on. Um, it's written in Go. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's for, the, for many DNS servers, uh, you would need to wait for the actual update to propagate through the secondary name ser servers and so on. But this one has a TCL of one second. So it's always fresh, in a way. And uh, it's only one instance, uh, anyway. Mm, I'll show you a short uh, video about the inner workings of this. If you can see it, I don't, I don't know. Uh, it's a bit small. No, you can't see it. I won't show it. Um, yeah, it shows the functionality, just like uh, getting getting the uh, getting the account. Um, so from the server, you get the um, subdomain and uh, your credentials, and uh, you're able to point the C name to them and uh, use the credentials with the HTTP API to uh, do the actual like uh, TXT record updates. Mm. It would look uh, if you would if you use a cert bot to do the um, updating. It's actually pretty simple script that you would need to run uh, using the cert bot uh, manual mode. And uh, this is example of such script here. Um, it's pretty much just uh, one post request to whatever the, you will, of course, need to self-host the, self the uh, Acme DNS, uh, subdelegate DNS software, because um, you wouldn't like, uh, want to give the authority of um, uh, signing uh, or requesting your domain certificates for, for a third party. But this is good for uh, like a bit larger infrastructures. It's pretty much just like a one post request here um, with the uh, data that's needed. So yeah. Um, I think that's pretty much it. All right, then. Thank you very much for your talk, Jonah. And we still have time for a few questions. If you please line up before the microphones. And we have a first question at the first microphone. Uh, yeah, does it work? Yeah. Um, so does ECMI DNS... Uh, sorry. Uh, please get a little closer to the yeah. microphone. Is this better? This yeah. is better. Does ECMI DNS support DNS sec? Uh, no, no. Oh, that's a bummer. Uh, and it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's a sub-delegate DNS anyway. It's uh, just like uh, for yeah, the... Because only, yeah. yeah, okay. And the other one is I see you've listed Boulder. That's is that the uh, is that the server component for Acme or? Uh, sorry. You've Bo listed Boulder. Boulder. Yeah. That's the server part of Acme. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And it's all open here. Yeah. It's okay. really go as well. So. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Don't be shy. Or actually, uh, 
to answer your question about uh, ECMA DNS, it does support the DNSSEC because you are able to uh, create, you are able to define in the configuration uh, in memory uh, DNS records that they don't have any kind of uh, update API, but uh, you're able to define them like a one shot. So what is the future in the field of CIA business? So let's encrypt hmm. will be the largest one and uh, and what is what is like the space left to other CAs because you are doing everything better than them and <laughs> better work than them and and you are giving it for free so it looks like you are winning the whole business let's encrypt will be the largest and <laughs> easiest to use yeah that's yeah that's actually a good question i don't know answer to but uh the CAs will have to renew them uh, renew themselves in a way, it's like uh, if the business model is broken, what can you do? Great work. <laughs> okay, uh, question related to that one. So, like, if Let's Encrypt becomes sort of too big to fail, but that could happen. But like, are you? Uh, is anyone else thinking about using the same infrastructure to? Uh, have a like similar CA, but with like different trust route. Yeah, um, of course not the same infrastructure, but the same yeah, ACME and so like on. Yeah, yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, there was an initi initiative by um, Startcom before they got distrusted. Uh, <laughs> they <coughs> they released this. Uh, um, Start and uh, 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 client software and automation system called, called Start Encrypt, which had uh, most of these horrible problems as well that they had. Um, and uh, when they got a lot of backlash, uh, they actually uh, announced that they are going to move to ACME. But, uh, well, the rest right. is history. They <laughs> Thanks. No, they're distrusted. Not because of the <laughs> announcement, but yeah, yeah. Thanks. So yeah, thank you. Okay, then please, one more applause. Thank you, Jonah.